Like most of the recent mainline Resident Evil games, the Resident Evil 4 remake is really good. And if you've seen my video on the original Resident Evil 4, I'll throw a link in the description in case you're interested in that, you could probably guess that I was going to recreate the Professional No Merchant run on the remake as soon as I could. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, we beat the original Resident Evil 4 on the hardest difficulty without using the merchant. It's a really fun run and you should give it a shot yourself. So in the original game, the achievement for beating on Professional was called Heart of Steel. For the remake, the achievement's now called Peerless Agent, and yes, it's still the hardest difficulty in the game, you unlock it by beating the game once. And to my absolute delight, they added an achievement for No Merchant this time around as well. It's called Silent Stranger, so we're going for both of those achievements simultaneously. That means, besides playing the game on the hardest difficulty, we're not allowed to talk to the merchant at all for the entire playthrough. This means no buying weapons, upgrades, repairs, or other items. We're stuck with the kids' meal inventory, and we can only use what we find. Playing on Professional has three main differences from the other difficulties, beyond just being harder. One, there are no auto saves or checkpoints. You're always put back to your last manual save at a typewriter, so I absolutely abused saves after big fights or clearing out an area. Two, you can only perfect parry enemies with your knife. In hardcore and other difficulties, there's a pretty generous parry window, so this threw me off for a bit. Three, all weapon upgrades are available from the start, but this means absolutely nothing to us in the context of the run, since the merchant is stranger danger. One last thing to note before we start is that this is a new game run, so no new game plus shenanigans. No unlocks, no extras, no DLC, none of that. Also, this was my second ever playthrough, so there's probably a lot of cool strategies and stuff I had or still have no idea about. Regardless, feel free to light me up in the comments for not knowing which enemies die instantly from tickling their assholes or whatever. Chapter 1 starts off pretty much the same way it does in the original, with a little bit of home invasion and then a little bit of village invasion. There's a few things to touch on here. The first is that the shotgun is still in this house and it's the first of four guns you can get without the merchant, not including the starter pistol. And it's my boss fight workhorse for a good chunk of the run. The second thing is that, as far as I know, you can't pull off the village skip on a new game or with the pistol. Or if you can, it's probably a hard shot I don't have the patience to wage war with a bell tower. If you don't know what I'm on about, you can shoot the church bell from the village and skip the whole intro fight, at least in the new game plus for sure. The third thing is that since we can't upgrade our firepower, we don't do a whole lot of damage and need a lot of ammo for some of the bosses. And while enemies still tend to drop what we need, we still want to hoard as much as possible. This means running is our number one option about 99% of the time. The other 1% is bloodlust, so get used to hearing that I ran. A lot. Anyways, I ran around and kicked ladders down until bingo. Idiots. Hey, there we go. Where's everyone going? Bingo. The rest of the chapter is just some drive-by looting and running away from getting the bad touch. I tried to save up any flashbangs I found for one of the first bosses, and that's another thing we'll talk about when it happens. Please, please, please! We're fine. The cutscene at the start of chapter 2 has made me physically react every time I've seen it. That looks like the most fucking painful thing, like more than anything in this game. And then we're treated with a stealth and knife tutorial. Stealth is pretty situational and the knives are pretty essential. Almost everything we do with the knife takes up durability, especially using them as a self-defense item when someone grabs us or something. So knives create a pretty interesting decision on when and how to use them. Plus, we gotta rely on finding new ones since we're going no merchant and can't repair Leon's personal knife once it's used up. On that note, the very first merchant is here as well and we can't even shoot him. Typewriter placement feels kind of evil here because in a lot of instances, they're pretty close to the merchant, which left me terrified I was gonna accidentally talk to him when I was trying to save. Anyways, the meat and potatoes of this chapter is getting a crank to open a door, and the best course of action to get it is running like a coward. Surprise surprise. After that, it's just juking a Dr. Salvador, and that's it. See ya, idiots! Chapter 3 has the second most important thing brought back from the OG besides the bingo line, and of course, it's the dog. <laughs> well, and the shooting range is back with an absolute banger of a song. An 
Instead of getting bottle caps like in the original, we get charms for inventory that give us passive buffs. Some are definitely better than others, and the majority of them don't even help for this run. Three... <laughs> 30% <laughs> off knife repairs. For most of the run, I used charms that increase the chance of crafting bonus ammo, because there's some light crafting in this game as well, but most of the recipes are locked behind the merchant, like the flash grenade recipe, which would have been insanely helpful if there was any other way to get it. At the very least, we can craft all the main ammo types. Generally, I stuck to shotgun ammo though. Okay, so next we're supposed to get some gas to fuel a boat to go on a little rip across the lake, and this is one of the times where stealth is pretty useful, because immediately on our way to get the gas, there's a brute we can unalive with a stealth boat. Then we just run for the gas. Now that we're all gassed up, it's boat time. And no, I'm not shooting the water first. Not a lot to say about the Delago fight besides that I threw harpoons until it died. I mean, I did my best to not get eaten. This is pretty much a turret section. It's nighttime now in Chapter 4, which means it's time for Plague of Villagers. All of the Plague are still weak to flashbangs, but it's best just to run by them most of the time. Now we're looking for a couple keys that'll unlock another key. Typical Resident Evil stuff. Honestly, they're both really easy to get. One is pretty much free, you just just press a couple buttons, and the other one involves running past some villagers and then pressing more buttons. Let me in, let me in, let me in! There's a couple things to do on the lake though. Like, the second gun we can find in the run is on an old boat, and it's my sweet baby, the Red Nine. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, look at it. It does like half a bullet more damage than the starter pistol and has lower stats and everything else, but I still prefer to use it. Next, we zip over to Chicken Island for the first of two golden eggs we need. If you know, you know. If you don't, you'll find out. On our way to the church, we get our first actual boss fight, and it's against the troll from the Mines of Moria in Fellowship of the Ring. Man, we really need more good Lord of the Rings games. Anyways, Buddy absolutely eats up shots, and I'm not very good at dodging him, so this is what I ended up saving my early game flashbangs for. We shoot him in the teeth until his back opens up, flashbang it, shotgun it, rinse, repeat. So now that this is out, you got worms too? Wow. That did not go the way I wanted to go. Sooner or later, the dog shows up to help. If you're not an asshole who leaves the dog in the bear trap. And the dog speeds this fight up quite a bit. Get it? Because the dog bites his ankle? A bit. <laughs> but yeah, the flashbangs are nice here. Not a bad fight. There we go. Thanks, bud. I love him. Right before the chapter ends, we get our very first look at the Plague of Dogs. They look fucking hilarious. We don't want on the Peanut Butter Express though, so we bail. We'll see them again in the castle. One puzzle later, it's chapter five in Ashley time. Back in the original, you could make Ashley follow close behind you or stay put in a corner Blair Witch style. In the remake, it's a little bit different because the options are to be close behind us or further behind us. No Blair Witching. I'm not sure if I'm missing something or if she just has zero will to live because a lot of the time she doesn't seem to want to be near me, which is relatable. And in the original where I felt like she would actively try to run past enemies when she was following me, here it just kind of feels like she wants to die. Ashley, what do you mean don't leave you? Where are you? Now we gotta get Ashley out of here. And after a quick run through the village where nothing bad happened at all. All right, we gotta hide up in those fucking uddies. <laughs> what? <laughs> all right, I feel better. We've got the cabin fight. It's the same deal as the original. Kill X amount of enemies or last X amount of time and we're home free. This is the first part of the run where I got my ass Omega lolled. Ooh, I fucking whiff. Are you I didn't even see him fucking throw that. Shit. That's not what I wanted. Mother! I adopted the age-old strategy of stair camping with the shotgun. Worked for me in the OG, mostly works for me here. Grenades and knives help too. After a certain amount of villagers are killed, we get boards to progressively block up the windows downstairs until they start using ladders on the second floor. Eventually a brute spawns and instead of killing him, I just ran his ass up and downstairs until Ashley decides that we've suffered enough. See ya, don't slash. Why is that Joel from- Why is Joel from The Last of Us here? This is fucked up. Leon, this way, hurry! 
Thank God! Chapter 6 is exciting because we get a mini boss fight and then an actual boss fight back to back. First up are the Bella sisters, and I was kind of afraid they'd eat up all my ammo before the big boss, Mendez. But something I learned pretty early on is that fire is really strong. Strong enough that there are no incendiary grenades in the remake, which is a little sad because I really love those things. Instead, we have to shoot lanterns or molotovs for a big old fire AoE that does a pretty good amount of damage. So here's what we did. That's good. That's a really good spot right there. After toasting them, I ran them to the edge of their aggro because apparently you can just leave the arena they're in and they won't follow you out, then shot them and kicked them a bunch. Please be enough. Shit. Okay, so that's one. Oh, no, we just straight up fucking killed her. God damn, dude. Okay. Mendez is next up to bat, and while he's not as easy as he was in the original, he's not as bad as I thought he would be. For his first phase, pretty much all I had to do was climb a ladder, then run side to side, and sometimes press the dodge button. His attacks usually leave the eyeball on his back open for a shot or two, then it's back to running. Sometimes he whips out a Beyblade attack, but that can't hit us if we drop down. Rinse repeat until his legs fall off. Phase 2 is kind of the same in the way that half of Mendes' attacks are dodged by running side to side. He'll still try to whip out the spin attack, but we can just go up instead of down this time to avoid it. Beyond that, I tried to stay in reach round range with the shotgun and unloaded in him. There we go! Chapter 7 puts us in the castle, and we get a very warm medieval welcome here in the form of a bunch of catapults taking pot shots at us. I was struggling a bit with Ashley listening to me here. She kind of just did her own thing for a bit, but it ended up baiting a handful of guys into friendly fire. So maybe she's smarter than I thought. Ashley lived? Now we're meeting Salazar for the first time, or I guess they call him by his first name, Ramon, in the remake. So that's what we're going to call him too. Ramon sends out a bunch of guys after us, and all we have to do is boost Ashley over this wall, and we give him the slip. The first Garador of the castle is here, and while he looks pretty cool in the remake, he's also basically useless if we throw a flashbang, then crank the door open and leave. Guess we'll have to wait. Not like this! Oh, he can get through there. All right. Well, there's a really easy way of dealing with him. Now for the water hall. Casually, I found this room super fun, but on No Merchant, it was a little annoying. There's two phases to this room, and for the first phase, we need to get a crank to lower a staircase, and there's a load of guys in here, including a firing squad of crossbows. You might think I'd be forced into fighting here, but I'm an expert coward, and running actually works pretty well, so the first part isn't too bad. Once we get to the top of the stairs, pretty much all the guys we ran past won't chase us up here. The crossbows might still try to potshot us, though. Phase two is the annoying bit, because now we need Need Ashley to crank some platforms out of the water without getting got. And like I said earlier, it really feels like she wants to die. Seriously, she like tiptoes over corpses, then curls up and screams if someone gets within five feet of her. Also, flashbangs blind Ashley, so those aren't as useful as you'd think. Every time we lose here, we're sent back to the start of the first phase, and we gotta run through it all over again. So I'll save you the hour of attempts. Eventually I got through, and all it cost me was most of my ammo. I guess Ashley heard me talking shit though, because she stabs us and bails. Chapter 8 kicks off with a room that is just begging to be stealthed. We need to kill a red cultist dude for his lamp to open a door. The problem being is that no matter what I tried, one of his goons around him would get triggered regardless of how I approached them. Is that guy just big chill in there? Can we assassinate him? Sorry to interrupt. Okay, no. Will he notice if I do this? He's gone! So I settled on blowing him up instead. 
The rest of this chapter is pretty much just sprinting past everyone. Nothing too exciting beyond shooting a giant in the face with a cannon, and surely we won't see that one later in the game in a tag team boss fight. Also, Ashley's back with us by the end of the chapter. Chapter 9 has a few areas worth touching on, but nothing too complicated. First, we have the maze, and unlike the original, Ashley's in here with us this time. The dogs are all back too, but instead of running from them, I just found it easier to kill them. Other than that, we're pulling levers until a gate opens. Now we're looking for three pieces of a statue in three different rooms that will all together open a door for us. Piece one is in a pure puzzle room where you just sit in the proper spot at a table. Easy enough. Piece number two is protected by some Plaganites, and while their attacks are pretty telegraphed, we also get a pretty big room to run them around in as well. On top of that, Ashley will throw these blue fire lanterns down and stun the knights, making it really easy to kill them. Go to hell, you rusty piece of shit! Come on, we need them to walk in here. That's fucking clutch. Will the third one get in here in time? Nope. Oh! Fuck yes, chat. See, that's how we want that to go. Yeah. Nighty night. Knights. Oh my god. The room after the knights has the cubic device, which is an item we need to have to unlock the third no merchant gun in a little bit, plus the second golden egg a little after that. The final piece of the statue is in the gallery. If you've played the OG, you'd probably recognize this room as the one where you find the RPG, or the room you're in before Sadler dicks down Luis. Unfortunately, there's no RPG or dicking down in the remake. On the bright side, if you throw a grenade here, you can skip the entire room. With all these pieces back together, Leon gets caged like the wild animal he is, and we're playing as Ashley now. This section is exactly the same as if we were playing it normally, no merchant doesn't really affect it. So we pull a lever and save Leon. Yay. Then Ashley gets abducted and is gone for a few chapters. Also yay. The first thing that we do in chapter 10 is run back to one of the rooms we goon around as Ashley in, and use the cubic device to unlock the assault rifle. This is the third gun you can get going no merchant and does three times damage against weak points, which is really useful later. We have our first run in with the Novistadors in this chapter, and they're about on par with how annoying I found them in the original. With the sheer amount of bug spam, I just flashed and ran. Present for you. Shit, I might have wanted to save that. Ooh, I could go for some chips right now. Maybe I'll buy some chips. Okay, really? Right after that, we've got the double Garador room, and it'll be the second and last time we see these guys. At first, I try to run them around and bait them into bitch slapping each other, but I think they only do reasonable damage to the cultists that flood in the room here. I'd probably have tried to test it more if I didn't have to rerun through the Novistador room every time I died, so I settled on grenade spam. At the end of the chapter, we're facing the Vertigo, who is definitely in the running for easiest boss fight in the game. Mostly because we don't have to fight it, we just have to run it around and wait for an elevator. Chapter 11 is pretty much a buddy cop movie where we get a roll around with Luis. First we run and get some dynamite to blow up a rock, which can kill you if you stand in front of it. Don't ask me how I know, I don't want to talk about it. Then we've got another boss fight. This time it's double giants. I wonder what happened to the side of that one's face. This fight's as easy as flashbanging the first one and dumping him in the pit. All right, one down. Then waiting for Luis to throw some explosives on the armored one and giving him the same treatment. Luis, get off that! <laughs> no! Oh, never mind, he's chill. After a quick minecart ride, we're dumped in a Novistador nest that we want nothing to do with. Then one short elevator ride later, and Luis is dead. Luis! <laughs> Long time no see, Rookie. 
This is our appetizer to the Krauser fight, and it's some snake eater shit. He kicked my ass a couple of times here because I had no idea for the entirety of this run that you could actually look at the knife icon in the bottom right to see it light up when you're supposed to parry. That, uh, that would have helped a lot for here and for later. Regardless, it's a pretty fun fight. There we go. Chapter 12 is our last one in the castle, and before we head to the Ramon fight, we gotta make a stop in the throne room for a couple of things. Ow! One is because Leon sitting in this chair will be great for the thumbnail. And two is the second golden egg. To get to Ramon, we've gotta take an elevator, and to get to the elevator, we gotta avoid a fire-breathing statue of Ramon first. But we can just shoot it in the back of the head to disable it. And then we gotta book it up a staircase Donkey Kong style while boulders are rolled down at us. After that, we're on the elevator. Oh my good god! That was lucky. Just like in the original, the elevator stops if there's too much weight on it. In the case of the remake, that means if any enemy gets on it. Oh shit. We can make this part a bit easier by pulling the boulder lever right before we get on. This stops the first wave of guys who will try to ruin our ride. Beyond that, we're just trying to shoot guys before they can hop on. Now for the climactic battle with Ramon. Come forward. Chapter 13 introduces us to the last part of the game, the island, and the very first area is pretty much identical to the original, except instead of a JJ with a chain gun, we've got a brute with a wrist-mounted automatic crossbow. All I've got for him is that if you shoot his little red ammo box, he explodes. None of that matters though, because the most important thing is that they brought back the regenerators and made them super thick. This is the first time where I didn't want to run away from an enemy, but we have to. The whole vibe gets killed by these puzzles that I'm awful at. I spent way too much time trying to figure these things out. On the flip side, we get the fourth and final no merchant gun, the MP5, which I sent straight to the storage after I used it up. We end up having to fight one regenerator out of all of this, because it ate a wrench that we need. It's not really a match for the assault rifle with the thermal scope, and as an added bonus, we get to watch it jiggle. I wanted to look at his cheeks. By the way, we're doing all this for a key that unlocks Ashley's holding cell. Now we have Ashley back for around half of chapter 14 before she gets abducted again. Before that happens, she gets to tag along for a timing puzzle that kind of reminds me of one from Final Fantasy VII Remake, which is pretty much the sole reason I've only ever played the game once. We go at the same time. Yeah, okay. I hate this puzzle. Since we have two heavy grenades on hand, this next part is a cakewalk. Normally Ashley bashes this wall and we'd have to fight off some gamers until we could bail. But if we throw a couple grenades as soon as the section starts, we can do this. Alright Ashley, time to go! Then if we run all the way down to the merchant, everyone goes away. Ashley! I have some new goods that might interest you. They all just despawned when the doors closed. Yo, that's busted. Then Ashley's abducted again. Now we're on Mr. Krauser's wild ride, and I would like off, please, because straight up, Krauser fucked me up. But also, he's still a really fun fight, so I was kind of into it. <laughs> <laughs> My fucking knife! Crash, stop, please! Dude, I don't deserve this! <laughs> no more! What the hell were you doing for two years? Oh, he shot me in the dick! <laughs> Oh my god. The whole first half of this fight is basically getting through what I imagine is a typical American morning. Die, rookie. Yeah? Fucking kill me. Please. 
The second half of this is actually fighting Krauser, once against normal Krauser, normal being used very loosely here, and it's essentially a longer version of the fight we had after he penetrated Luis, except I mixed the shotgun into our slap fight this time around. That was quick, there we go, that was a good one. Now we've got less normal Krauser, and this is essentially where I got hard stuck for a couple of hours. I tried parrying him and finding out the timings for way longer than I should have. Like, I just couldn't do it. Every time I thought I figured out one attack, he'd smack me around with a different one, or I'd get the meat treatment. Oh my god! I don't believe it. Crush my head, dude. I'm done. At least until I changed strategies. Why face my attacker head on when I could be doing what I've been doing for the entire run and just run away? Constantly running back and forth across the arena and going up and down the ladders makes Krauser entirely easier to deal with. I mean, he still hit me from time to time, but I wasn't getting popped in the first 60 seconds anymore. This essentially turned it into a battle of attrition, but being an absolute coward the entire run saved me enough ammo for this fight. Oh. Yes! Oh, thank God it's over! We get his knife after the fight, and we send that straight to the storage until the final boss fight. Krauser's super gonna come back as an even more mutated boss if there's a separate ways DLC, right? Now it's an all-out war in Chapter 15, a war that we are not equipped to fight at all. But that's where Mike the Helicopter Pilot comes in. I just hung back for the most part and cleaned up the loot afterwards. There is this one part with an AA gun, but another two heavy grenades take care of it. Just chuck them up there and Mike will do the rest. Unfortunately, he conveniently runs out of ammo right before the area where there's three turrets and a shitload of guys, but that's what flashbangs are for. Anyways, as soon as Mike arrived in our lives, he's gone. But at least he made most of this chapter painless, like his death. Mike! After we sprint through the rest of this chapter, we get Ashley back again, for the last time. No more abductions. This is it. Chapter 16, The Light at the End of the Tunnel. All we got to do is kill Sadler and we're golden. The worst part about his fight is that he talks about Parasite Jesus for like five minutes, and we get to hear his full ass sermon every time we die and restart the fight, which definitely happened a few times. Oof. Besides that, he's not so bad. It's a game of pop the eyeball, and the rifle is really good for that. The explosive barrels in the arena open them up for some easy pops, and I used a similar strategy to what I used on Krauser, meaning I did a lot of climbing and jumping. He can still smack us around if we're too slow or if we stick too close to him, but most of the time it was fine, and I got some decent damage in. After we pop all of his leg eyes, we gotta poke him in the mouth eye with Krauser's knife, and then rinse repeat. He'll spawn no Vista doors, and they have to be the actual worst part of this fight, mostly because I hate when boss fights throw in shitty little minions that are only there to cheap shot you or just be annoying. His puke laser can be a little dangerous as well, but once you know it's coming, it's easy enough to dodge. Of course, there's a phase two as well, and I might have panicked a bit when I first got to it. <laughs> God! God! God damn it. The second time around, I realized it's really easy to dodge. And once we wait long enough, we can get a rocket launcher and then it's GG. Let's fucking go! Okay, so I actually managed to die a bunch during the escape sequence because I'm an idiot. <laughs> okay, I'm not reading chat anymore. You guys are goddamn distracting. That's your fault. <laughs> I'm good. Now it's really GG. Smooth escape! Wait, where's the no merchant thing? You alright? 
I'm not sure that was insane. Do I have to wait for credits? I probably have to wait for credits. And that's the Peerless Agent Silent Stranger run, or the Resident Evil 4 Remake Professional No Merchant run. Take your pick, because neither name really rolls off the tongue. Mixing these two achievements together was a lot of fun, and will probably end up being one of my favorite ways to revisit the game on my yearly replay. And I'm sure by the time that that rolls around, there's gonna be some really cool strategies to blow through most of it. I mean, there probably already are, and I guess I can finally go watch other people play the game now. Do you ever want to catch these runs live? I stream over at twitch.tv slash anxiety. And as always, thank Thanks for watching. Oh god. Silent Stranger Imperialist Agent! <laughs> that took way too goddamn long, man!